Yeah, the guys. Vincent passed out. Rainy morning. Vincent and I are going to rebuild some tires. You guys want to see something ridiculous? Quarter inch breaker bar. I mean, come on, snap on. Anyways, here's all the tools that I'm gonna need. Got the valve core remover, deflate the tire so it doesn't explode on you. Got three eighths drive, I mean, a quarter inch drive, three eighths socket, a pick to remove the O ring. I brought this out just so I can take the bolts off faster. I'm actually following this uh, maintenance manual or component maintenance manual. Use this to break the bead where the rubber of the tire meets the flange of the rim. Open for business. This is the bead. Anyways, for any of you viewers out there who are experts at disassembling tires, let me know if I'm doing anything that is making my life way more difficult than it has to be or if you have any tricks. After we remove the fifth one, which is, this is on its fifth tire right now, we have to uh, clean the rim thoroughly and then send it out for non-destructive testing. Why do I gotta be the one breaking the beat, man? That's it, bro. Got it? Yeah, easy. No. So the reason we're going through building up these uh, wheels is so that we'll have spares. That way if a plane were to need a tire change, we don't have to go through this whole process just to put a tire on. So we have a whole bunch of spare wheels sitting in the back. That way we can make a quick tire change if we ever need to. It really only takes probably 15 minutes to change a tire. Yeah, and it takes like two hours and to probably, reassemble. And probably, yeah, an hour or two to, to put new rubber onto the rim. Yeah, because not so. only do you have to reinstall a new tire, but you have to clean it, inspect it, and the cleaning process takes quite a while. These bolt assemblies, you got a bolt two washers that are chamfered and a chamfer is basically a uh, if you look at this washer it has like a little uh, slant in the inner rim and that basically fits underneath the head of this bolt if you look the head of this bolt is not completely like a 90 degree there's a little bit of a like a like a slant to it like a curve oh another thing we do after we uh, assemble this is we balance it important to do that because um, if you have an imbalance it'll shimmy and basically what shimmy is, is when you're, when the wheel's going along, it'll want to wiggle back and forth. These are new and they came with uh, bearings and a uh, retainer and a snap ring, all looped up for us, which is real nice. It says right here, please, please, they said, they said please. Please align the red balance dot on the tire with the wheel heavy point. What that means is this red dot right here on the tire, every single tire has that. Line that up with the heavy point of the assembly, which would usually be, it says so right here in the manual, usually, usually is the valve, the valve stem. We should in, run real quick for this other. Yeah. Okay. Duty calls. That was Roberto, by the way. He's one of our maintenance controllers. Job is to relay any information between the pilots and like problems with the plane. MELs and stuff to us and let us know what to do. Forecasting, which basically means uh, deciding when to bring a plane in for repair. Uh, look at this stud over here. <laughs> What's up, Josh? What's up, man? How are you? <laughs> hey, you want to drive me to Jet Center? Yeah. So on this plane, <clears throat> we got to do an operational test of the vapor cycle conditioning system. It's like an air conditioner, similar to what your car has. Um, I've got personal protective equipment and in case anything should go wrong I'll have safety glasses too. It's in the back of the plane. Let me show you guys. That, that's it right here. This plane also has an air cycle machine which uh, is used for air conditioning, heating and pressurization and that's actually basically it takes the bleed air off the engine and then runs that through a temp control valve and a few other valves and then that air is used to pressurize the cabin so the vccs is really just supplemental uh, air conditioning got the plane fully powered on and this is the environmental control window right here on our lower mfd here are the switches acs bleed air i think uh, james was explaining to you guys about our air cycle machine only runs when the engine's on but right now what we're trying to test is the electrical heat cool so now i'm going to go ahead and put it in auto 
and then I'm gonna select cockpit temperature and lower that and there you go you hear it come on cold air comes out from these vents right here the bleed air comes out of these vents right here so right now there's nothing coming out of this but you got air coming out of here it's getting pretty cold so here's the exhaust for the air conditioner a lot of air going through there we'll go inside and make sure uh, cold air is blowing out of the vents you got cold air up there yeah I got cold air so what we're doing right now is a RON check it stands for remain overnight but we do it basically as an overnight or like a through inspection uh, it's just a brief inspection of the aircraft and engine uh, to take care of obvious stuff like servicing oil uh, filling up the oxygen or tires and looking for any issues like pop circuit breakers we also do an engine download and we send it to a group that analyzes the file and, and lets us know if we've had any exceedances or any deviations in our engine performance for the RON check I'm doing all the outside inspections. Um, James is gonna be inside. I'm gonna, right now I'm checking tire pressure. I'm gonna dial it into about, say 250. Naturally, the nose wheel is gonna want a shimmy. There's this thing called a shimmy damper, which is basically like a shock, like a, like a, like the same thing in your car, like a, like a pneumatic shock. It's actually a hydraulic shock strut. It's right here. And what it does is it, there's a little orifice, which is essentially a small hole that limits fluid travel in both directions. So when the wheel wants to turn really hard one way, the fluid will stop it from turning. So you can turn the nose wheel, but it takes um, you know, a good amount of force to turn. So that's how we stop shimmy. Downloading the engine trend data to the laptop to the plane via ethernet cord. And we use the software on the computer to initialize the download. So here, basically, I'm going to look at the flight log and look at the current times, and I'll compare that to the Hobbs meter. It's important to verify these times are correct because all the inspections that we perform on the airplane and the engine verify these times. Uh, that way we don't overfly the inspection. So that was written up earlier today, and I'm just going to make a logbook entry here to clear off that it's, uh, it's functioning correctly. The plane has an oxygen bottle right here. This is where you charge it. Dialing in the pressure, 1800 PSI. Next, we'll check the operation of the interior and exterior lights. James just turns on all the lights on this plane. So right here, you got a flashing recognition light. Your strobe and nav, three position lights. Logo lights, landing light, taxi light. That flashing red one down there is the beacon. Gonna look in the engine bay for any discrepancies. Vince has got the other camera right now. He's showing you guys uh, how to look over the engine. Do you think he's being too thorough or is it good to have that much detail? Be great to get some feedback. Underneath this case is a screen and that is where the engine gets its air from. From here and then the air will go scoop up and get sucked into the engine. These ducting for the exhaust of the uh, starter generators. Check all the hose clamps. That right there is one of your igniters. We have two igniters on this engine. Inlet for the oil cooler. Looks almost like a car radiator, huh? That's the heat exchanger for the air cycle machine. Bleeder for the booze, make sure that. Here's another access panel. Make sure all of them are closed. The FCU stands for fuel control unit. I look at all the linkages. Here's the oil filter uh, housing. Make sure there aren't any leaks. Here's one of our batteries. This battery is battery number two. It's used for starting. Our other igniter. There's our emergency exit. I want to make sure that there's no, the door seal is not protruding. Here's one of our pitot tubes. There's another one on the other wing. Here's our angle of attack indicator. Here's the ray dome. It has a radar in here for weather. Make sure all the screws are on nice and tight. Here's our static port. Oh yeah, for all you guys who don't know what a pitot tube and a static port is, those are basically um, probes to let the pilot know what their airspeed and altitude is. So when you go higher up in the air, the pressure decreases and it senses that to let the pilot know how high they are. Every plane has one. All right, so I powered the plane off. Now I'm gonna turn off the external power, which is provided through this ground, ground power unit. It's uh, 20, 28 volts DC that we're supplying the aircraft with. So this thing is basically a giant uh, inverter. Let's see, inverter, no, it's a rectifier. Alternating current from the wall to direct current for the plane. Why Kiki Grill? Waikiki Grill for some festive Hawaiian food. 
Hawaiian barbecue. Waikiki is the um, no Honolulu is the capital of Hawaii. Waikiki is the beach. It's like a major tourism beach in Hawaii and Oahu. Oahu is like the main the the the, the tourist attraction island is like the main island you think of when you think of Hawaii. There's Oahu and Maui and the Big Island. Just in case you were born yesterday. All right, paperwork's done. We we'll move this plane outside. I think it's got like a 1:30 flight. So we get it out there. Shout out to the boss, woo!